So the last of the um, changes that we, we noted is uh, the license metric shift, going from a CPU model to a core model. And so uh, at the surface, this might look like a simple change. Um, but if we dive a little bit deeper, it's easy to see the complexities that, that start to um, come forth as we look at correctly licensing our environment. So one such complexity is the minimum core requirement that Broadcom does require. So both when you're purchasing licenses and when you're, you're counting your licenses, Broadcom does require a minimum core requirement of 16. And so how does that look like? So if we look at the table on the, the right side of the screen, we have uh, two tables, an old and a new. And the old represents the uh, prior CPU model and the uh, new is the, the new core model. And with the CPU model, it was very straightforward. You would sum up the, the CPUs in the environment and we get to 16 CPUs. Uh, but when we look at the core requirement, we have to look at two calculations. Um, and so the first calculation is looking at the number of core licenses required per CPU. We multiply that by the number of CPUs per ESXi host, and then we multiply that by the number of ESXi hosts. And then the other calculation is taking 16 cores and multiplying that by the total number of CPUs in each ESXi host. And it's important to note that Broadcom does require you to um, take whichever the two calculations will uh, result in that the higher core count. So um, to see how this works um, in practice, if we take a look at the lower uh, table, the, the new table, and we'll take a look at the top line, uh, we'll look at the top left box and we'll run through the calculation. So if we take the first calculation, we take the eight cores that are required per CPU, we would then multiply that by the two CPUs, and each of these boxes are just representing a single ESXi host. So in this example, we would come to 16 cores. If we then look at the second calculation, it would take the 16 cores, we multiply the same two CPUs, and we get to 32 cores. So for this example, uh, we'd be required to implement the uh, second calculation. If we then look at the uh, middle box, um, and we apply these same calculations again. We would first take the 20 cores per CPU. We'd multiply that by the four CPUs, and we come to 80 cores. Um, and then if we apply the second calculation, we just take 16 cores, multiply that by the four CPUs, and we would get uh, 64 cores. So in that standpoint, we'd actually want to utilize the first calculation. And then if we look at the final uh, box on the, the top line, some of you might have already noticed or caught on that uh, both of these calculations will get to the same core count. We'll have 64 cores. Um, and so in this example, um, ultimately, once you've done these calculations, we get to the, the 272 cores that are required. And so one thing that we do want to note is uh, once you've done your core requirement calculations, don't go into panic mode. Some core optimization may be possible. Um, an expert in this area can help determine what options you have. And as a little tip, uh, when you're looking to decide which of these calculations uh, you need to run, generally speaking, if the core requirement per CPU is uh, below 16, you'd want to use the second calculation. And if it's 16 or greater, uh, the first calculation will be the, the one that gets you to the, the right answer.